Okay, um, hello again. Uh, my name is Victor. I'm from Chinese University of Hong Kong. Thank so you. today I uh, will talk about digital literacy and student engagement in second language writing. So when we talked about digital literacy, student engagement, and L2 writing, we know that there are three key terms. The first one is digital literacy, second one, engagement, and the third one is writing. So let's look at the first key term here, digital literacy. Digital literacy is a term that was brought to scholarly attention by Gilster. He refers DL as an ability to understand and use information from a wide range of resources. Basically, it's about how to use and when to use technologies effectively. And then gradually, we see people and then social practice because digital literacy gradually was considered a social practice because people interact with each other, especially when people have different social and cultural backgrounds. Langshire and Knobel in 2008 proposed four components of digital literacy. We can see the four components, underpins, background knowledge, central com competencies and attitudes and perspectives. I guess everyone is familiar with some of the term, for example, literacy per se. Literacy, basically, it means the ability to read and write. And then background, background knowledge, how to make use of information. Central competences such as knowledge assembly, evaluation of information, are also very important. And the last one, attitudes and perspective. So this is important, especially when we talked about independent learning or autonomous learning. Now let's look at another model of digital literacy. Jones and Hafner, they put forward a five dimension model. In their model, the the delineated five dimensions, doing, meaning, relating, thinking, and being. Their model is more related to language teaching and learning. So we can take a quick look of some of the examples here. For example, you read a web page and you post to a social network site. Sometimes when students write fan fiction, to gain a massive online audience, also collaborate with peers. So all these are related to language learning and teaching. So this is the first key term in today's topic, digital literacy. And now let's move on to the second key term, student engagement. The concept of student engagement emerged in works of educational psychologists. It is considered as a meta construct because it encompasses multiple dimensions. Among all the dimensions, Fredericks, Blumenfeld, and Paris put forward three dimension engagement. So we can take a look here behavioral engagement, emotional engagement, and cognitive engagement. So behavioral engagement refers to time on task, student participation. Emotional engagement is concerned with attitudes, sense of belonging, students' curiosity and interest. Cognitive engagement refers to students' effort, commitment, and the use of self-regulated strategies. Now let's move on to the third key term, second language writing. I guess many of you here are familiar with second language writing. When you are a teacher who teach students of speakers of different languages and they use English, mostly English as their second language. So when they write English, so English is considered their second language. 
L2 writing is the study of writing performed by non-native speakers when they write in a second or a foreign language. So some of the research areas in L2 writing, feedback on student writing. Here, feedback refers to teacher, peer, or computer-generated feedback, writing assessment, testing, genre analysis, different types of writing, argumentative, poem, fiction, narration, teaching and learning in universities, and uh, teaching and learning in schools. In recent years, L2 writing conducted in secondary schools received a lot of scholarly attention, and it's also an area of growing interest. Let's take a look at the comparison between L1 and L2. Silva conduct empirical research to examine L2 and L1 writing. So he found that L2 writers in general had a lot of difficulty when they write in a second language. For example, content generation is more stressful and less effective. L2 writers did not do much planning, both at the global and local levels. So global levels means the writer is dealing with topic area, generation of ideas, content, structures, organization. Local level means the writer dealing with sentences, um, words, and vocabulary. So L2 writers did less goal setting and had more difficulty organizing th their materials. So in terms of lower level concerns, L2 writing seems to be different and simpler. Now let's look at one important area of L2 writing, student engagement with feedback. As I mentioned earlier, feedback here refers to different types of feedback, feedback from teacher, from feedback from peers, and feedback from computer generated um, programs. So here we can see this engagement model, and this model was proposed by Zhang and Highland in 2018 it looks at student engagement with different types of feedback. AW here is computer-generated feedback. So you can see that the whole engagement process is influenced by individual factors and contextual factors. Okay, let's take a look at the engagement in greater detail. So the ABC engagement, effective engagement, refers to students' emotional responses and attitudinal reactions. Behavioral engagement is concerned with students' behavioral actions, such as their revision actions and time spent on revision. Cognitive engagement is normally considered the most challenging dimension because it uh, involves how students attend to feedback and how they respond to feedback to make revisions. You can see here, students need to revise their writing by using different types of cognitive and metacognitive strategies. Let's take a look at some computer-assisted language learning tools. Criteria, my access eraser are probably the most commonly used writing evaluation programs around the world. Um, some other programs are as follows. There is also one that's constantly used in China. And a lot of researchers, including me, have conducted research on PGAI. Um, so in a minute, I'm gonna share the screenshot of all the, of three of the, uh, computer-assisted uh, language learning tools. Grammarly, I think is getting more popular with um, people in different fields, such as writing emails, and also it's, uh, it's being used by teachers and students. So let's take a look at three computer-assisted language learning tools, which is also called automatic writing evaluation programs. So the first one, let's take a look at the, the first one. 
criterion was developed by ETS. So here, this is the interface of Criterion. So you can sign up for this uh, computer assisted language learning program. And if you have an account, so here, this is the, um, how the interface looks like, okay? You can see that um, there are different dimensions of assessment, for example, organization and development, grammar, usage, mechanics and style. So when students use this program to write their essays, they will get different types of feedback and comments from these computer programs. Um, so basically you can see that these are the areas of um, assessment and students can constantly revise their essays based on the comments and feedback. And this is the automatic writing program in China. So it's called PGAI. Uh, you can see that um, student essays are evaluated in following aspects, grammar, accuracy, coherence, and lexical resources. You, you also need to sign up for this program. Um, so here is a, a sample provided by its website. So when students finish a piece of writing, they can put it into this program and then they can get a quick uh, diagnosis of their writing. So several components, vocabulary, sentence, structure, and relevance. And there is also overall com comments. And there is the sentence level feedback. So some spelling, article, and arrows will be identified by this program. Now let's look at the third one, Grammarly. Grammarly is, um, is also a writing evaluation program. Um, just like the first two programs, um, it can provide very quick and direct diagnosis of your writing. So here they give the example of email writing. So when you have an account, so let's take a look, you can paste your writing into uh, its interface and then you can see that Grammarly provides you some feedback, okay? So correctness, whether you use some words correctly or not, clarity, engagement, and delivery. So you can respond to the feedback and make revisions. Okay, so these are the three commercial. I will call, yes, they are commercial programs because you have to pay to use their services. But for Grammarly, you can use it for the basic function without paying for its service. Okay, but it's quite basic. As you can see here, there's only four parts, right? Okay, so now I'm going to ask you a question. Do you think these digital tools or AW programs are helpful for language learning? What's your idea? Okay, um, yeah, if you feel, if you feel comfortable speaking, you can just speak. If you don't feel comfortable, you can write. So here, this is the question. Do you think it's helpful for language learning? I want to know how you think about it. So if you, if you want to uh, raise your hand, Dr. Victor, uh, tell them to raise their hands if they want to participate. Okay, yeah, so I can see some, okay, I can see the response. So, yes, most of them are good if they guarantee engaging. I use Grammarly, it is wonderful. Yes, that's true. Um, I think the most important thing is, okay, let's take a look. So, Dr. Victor, there is um, um, Miss uh, Helpy. George wants to speak to you. Okay, cool, no problem, yes. I think these tools are uh, very important. Uh, for any teacher to use, uh, it's, uh, it helps him or her to uh, improve 
uh, his own skills uh, as well. Uh, but uh, it's, I think it's some something uh, not useful uh, for speaking. It's just for writing and skills, but, but speaking, we need the better tools for speaking. Yes, yes, okay. Thank you very much for your answers. Okay, good. Yes, they can be very helpful and useful. And however, my answer to this question is, um, it depends, okay? So it depends on several factors. So the first one is formative or summative assessment. So for language educators, if we use it for summative assessment, it might not be very effective. If we use them in the process of writing, so students can learn how to edit and how to revise as a formative assessment, it will be very helpful. And students will not feel frustrated by the scores, okay? And the second one, I would say that it also depends on how teachers, instructors use them whether you use it as a complement to teacher feedback and peer feedback, or you use it to replace teacher feedback or peer feedback. For, I think it's more useful if you use it to, com to complement as an assistance, okay? As an assistance to teacher and peer feedback, as an assistant to teaching instruction. As we have talked about digital literacy, it's also very important for students to develop digital literacy, for them to use these tools. Okay, as I have seen some participants said that they can be good as long as they can guarantee engagement. Okay, that's a very good point. So it's important that these programs engage students or students need to know how to engage with these programs, okay? Okay, so now I'm gonna share with you three case studies that in my research um, to show how students can engage with writing and revision. So I will share with two students, sorry, three students, Rose, Flora, and Guo. So two of them are Chinese female students and one is a Chinese male student. Let's take a look, behavioral engagement. So this is the, the first component of behavioral engagement. I look at the number of submissions. So if you say that students are behaviorally engaged in learning or writing, they tend to make more efforts, right? They make more submissions. So you can see these students. So you can see that for this writing, she submitted 25 times. That means behaviorally, she's really engaged, right? Okay, let's move on to time on task. So in one of her essays, so you can see that from 24th to 26th, so that means that she spends two days, almost two days working on her essay. So time on task, how much time she spent on the task, okay? However, we know that if students are behavioral engaged, it doesn't mean that they are emotionally or cognitively engaged. So let's take a look. The second, dimension, effective engagement. So effective engagement, let's look at her emotional responses. So she said that she felt very sad and unhappy, frustrated about the score she got because it was the lowest. And other times she could feel very, very happy because her teacher shared her essay with other students and praised her, okay? So that means the student felt very, very delighted and excited when teacher praised her. Another component is their motivational change, okay? So the student said that 
when she found that multiple revisions could improve her scores and she felt very motivated. So she kept on revising her essay. Very important here, cognitive engagement. This is not very easy for most students because it requires a lot of efforts, strategies, and skills. So let's see how digital literacy and cognitive engagement are integrated in this dimension. So the student said that she felt that the feedback sometimes is a bit too mechanical. Uh, this is true for most of the digital tools, right? They are not smart enough, okay? So the student said that after consulting other rely okay, reliable sources, she's confident that the feedback is inaccurate. So here you can see that the students critically evaluated the feedback she got. So both literacy, okay, digital literacy and cognitive engagement. Monitoring. Monitoring is also very important for cognitive engagement. So the student said that she took a mental note when some expressions were given praise, okay, or positive reinforcement. So she said that she tried to use similar expressions to get good grades. Rewriting. Now I'm gonna talk about some revision operations. Rewriting. So you can see that the students, okay, the students did different Okay, in different drafts, she revised her essay. So from with the sincere help of the senior students to thanks to the selfless help and the kind advice of senior students. So this is um, the um, component, okay? So this is the changes she made from different drafts, how she rewrote her essay. Addition. So this is another student called Guo. So you can see that the first draft and the final draft. So in the final draft, he added two sentences. So this type of revision operation is also an indication of cognitive engagement. So, so he added, okay, so he added two sentences to give the essay a better summary. Okay, so uh, conclusion of my today's presentation. Very, very important, digital literacy. After I shared with you several models of digital literacies, some of you are probably still confused about what digital literacy is. So put it simply, we can see that, first of all, it means knowledge of digital tools. Students need to know how to use them. Secondly, they need to develop abilities to think critically about digital tools and the information. Thirdly, they need to have the a wi willingness to engage socially with other users. Student effective behavioral and cognitive engagement are dynamically interconnected. It's very important for students to integrate three dimensions, affective, behavioral, cognitive. As I mentioned earlier, when you see a student is behaviorally engaged, when he or she spends a lot of time, that doesn't mean he or she is cognitively engaged, right? They need to know how to use strategies, how to make revision, and how to monitor their learning. Digital literacy and student engagement are important to the improvement of L2 writing competences. Last but not least, teachers need to focus on how to develop L2 students' digital literacy and increase their engagement in writing and revision. Okay, so here are the four takeaways for today's presentation. These are all the references for my presentation and thank you very much shukran if you have any questions i'll be very happy to share my opinions thank you very much for your attention and participation thank you dr victor so if, um, 
any of us wants to uh, share his thoughts with Dr. Victor, just raise your hand or feel free to unmute yourself and speak to Dr. Victor. Go on. Okay, so probably I can just go back to the conclusion of today's um, presentation. So if uh, you have any question, just feel free to ask me. <clears throat> So, Dr. Ahmed Al Masri. Okay, thank you. Um, unmute yourself, Dr. Ahmed, and go on. Okay, thank you. I'm happy to have you, Dr. Victor. And yeah. I've seen this presentation, it's great. Um, my question is uh, how I'm going to use it in my sessions? how I'm gonna involve my uh, students in it within decisions. Um, I mean, it's not about home only or home learning or far learning. Um, I'm talking about face-to-face -face interaction. Okay, thank you very much for your question. Um, I think it's very important for instructors and teachers to develop an awareness of how to help students to develop their digital literacy. So when you are engaged in face-to-face -face teaching and learning, I think you can walk students through the components of digital literacy. First, first of all, you can teach them how to use different digital tools, okay? Familiarize them with different digital tools. Now there are many tools on the internet, so you can try to teach them how to use them. Secondly, I think it's very important for you to um, engage them to think critically. I think you probably can demonstrate in front of your students how to critically analyze a piece of writing or a piece of information. I think as a teacher, we need to cultivate students' ability to think analytically and critically to help them to distinguish inaccurate and accurate information. Thirdly, I think it's important for teachers to tell students how to monitor and how to evaluate their learning process, especially for monitoring. I think it's very important for teachers to show to the students how to monitor their learning process and how to evaluate their progress and see whether they're making progress against several standards. And monitoring, I think, always very important. For example, if you ask students to practice speaking, I think it's important for teachers to ask students to monitor their production. Sometimes they need to be very aware or conscious about their production. And the same is true for writing. When they finish a piece of writing, they need to go back and review and revise. So you know learning is always a recursive and non-linear process. So they really need to stop for a while and review and revise and monitor the whole process. Okay, this is my response to your answer. I hope okay, uh, great. I have answered yeah, your yeah, question. you have answered my question. Uh, um, for me, we are talking about writing. So, in the field of academic writing, um, about the MLA or the EPA, right? Um, how did they know the way to write well according to your theory? Okay. Um, yeah, according to my research, students know that it's not enough just rely on external feedback. You can see that parts, okay, parts of my research focus on students' autonomous learning. So students need to be good readers themselves. So as teachers, we need to help them to develop an awareness that good writers are good readers. So you have to help them. I guess probably in the beginning, we can help them to choose good samples for them to read according to their levels of proficiency. So as teachers, we need to carefully choose some texts for students to read. And then sometimes they need to analyze good essays. For example, in my research, I sometimes also help students to say, okay, 
for, for example, let's take a look at the abstract of this academical, academic article. So let's see how the writer move from one section to another, how to build the co coherence and how to be logically connected from one point to another. So as teachers, we need to demonstrate and to help students to understand what is good writing and how good writers make moves from one point to another. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, this is great. Yeah, this is great. I was asking you about the MLA style of academic writing and the ABA style of academic writing. Um, okay, EM, EMA, EFA? MLA. MLA, yes. Right, and ABA. Oh, yes, APA. Okay, yes, um, so this session is about writing, right? And um, we are using uh, the digital literacy to overcome writing obstacles. So how this, um, this machines tries to involve or engage with the MLA style or the ABA style, how did they, for example, how did they will help them to make a better bibliography or a better references or work cited? Yes. Uh, Have you get my idea? Yes, yes, sure. Yeah, okay, uh, great. No, the thing is, okay, and the thing is that in my research, um, citation is not part of uh, my focus. So I, okay, but I can, but I can respond to your question. I think for um, citation, especially for academic writing, you need to help students to, to understand how to cite, okay, how to cite correctly and how to paraphrase and how to use literature review. I think uh, it's important for, as I said, okay, teachers need to involve students in the analysis of some good research articles. So if we demonstrate to the students how each section of uh, um, an academic um, article look like, so students will gradually understand the structure, organization, and even they can try to imitate how, you know, some writers go about their writing. Thank you. Okay, some participants asked me to go back to the slide where all the AWE tools, digital tools here, okay? Yes. Okay. Okay, is, is Miss Hoda with us? The one she wants to ask a question. So tell me, tell Miss Hoda, uh, entering, um, if any of uh, the attendees wants to ask a question, just uh, unmute yourself and uh, go on. Okay, so doc Dr. Victor, let me ask you a question, one more question, please, if you would like. Sure. Uh, so, um, uh, the whole of the, this list, um, is the, any of them um, offering a free, um, uh, free usage for, uh, for usual users? Um, I'm sorry that most of these programs are commercially available, so which means that you need to pay mm -hmm. for its service. But as I mentioned that Grammarly, 
Grammarly provide some limited functions. Mm -hmm. I think it's enough for um, for some beginning writers, um, especially for students who really need some feedback on grammar and vocabulary. Yes. Um, for me, I think um, though we have all these tools. Sorry, sorry for that. Sorry. Sorry, Dr. Butler, for that. Okay. Um, okay, let me continue. Okay. Okay, even though some of these um, programs are not available, I think it's important for teachers and students to develop an awareness. These programs can only you okay, can only be used as an assistance to instruction, teacher instruction. Yes. I think for Grammarly, we can use its basic function and I think that will be enough. Mm -hmm. I don't think even though you pay for all these programs, you can get perfect feedback. It's important that for teachers, especially for teachers, to develop an awareness that we can only use this to engage students in writing, especially when, especially when teachers are very busy with, busy with heavy marking load, especially when you teach a large class. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can get a quick diagnosis from this programs. I think it's still very important for students to, to understand that we cannot rely on these programs all the time. So could, like I mentioned earlier in my presentation, students need to learn how to revise on their own. I think this is a very important message for all the writing teachers. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I think uh, Ms. Hawaida uh, has a question. Go yeah. ahead, Ms. Hawaida. You are welcome. You are welcome, Mr. Ham. Okay. I I'm just asking, can you, uh, criterion, uh, my access e-rater, uh, these are sites for that helps uh, anyone who can write an essay or even an e a thesis. Um, can you give us uh, an example uh, or, or can you look uh, on these uh, sites to show us how can we um, utilize or benefit from these sites? If, okay, if there is time, if, if there is no time, it's okay. Um, for example, I shared with you these screenshots. Okay, so I, in my presentation, I shared three um, programs, the criterion. Um, so here you can take a look. This is the interface. So the topic is uh, a great leader. Okay, so you have this topic and students can write their essays here. Okay, and then after they finish, they can get some feedback on different, on different areas. For example, organization, development, uh, grammar, mechanic and style. So they can receive some feedback. Okay, um, so this is the first one. The second one, as I mentioned here, uh, this is a program developed by a technol okay, technology company in China. And so here you can see that this is the sample provided by the website. So you hear when students finish their writing and they receive comments and also they get a score, vocabulary, sentence, structure, relevance, and they can also have sentence level feedback, which will identify the errors, okay? And these two, these two programs are not free, okay? They are commercial, they are commercial programs, so you have to pay for its service. However, um, for Grammarly, I think even though you don't have to pay, 
um, you, you still need to use it with great caution. So you can see here, okay, I just, okay, this is, it, this is an essay uh, written by my student. So you can see that, um, so this is a s essay about, I think about gifted, okay, gifted education. So the students, okay, um, paste one paragraph of his essay here. You can see that he received all the feedback, okay, and here it shows, okay, they are shown as all alerts. So correctness, clarity, engagement, and delivery. These are basic, okay, these are basic, okay, these are very basic um, comments. Mm. And you also get a, okay, you also get an overall score. Um, so I think as, uh, as I was um, respond, responding to Muhammad, okay, uh, yes. a few minutes ago. Yes. So I think the basic function of Grammarly is enough, okay? If you don't, okay, if you don't want to pay for its services, I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. You can't ask the students to use it, okay? Use its basic function to get a quick, okay, diagnosis, okay? A diagnosis of their essay. And then after that, they can submit their essays to you. So I think it's very important for teachers to integrate different types of feedback. So in my research, I also look at how students inter integrate computer-generated feedback peer feedback and teacher feedback. So they can go through different processes, okay? So first of all, maybe computer, all these digital tools, they can get a quick, okay? They can get a quick response from the computer programs. And then you can ask students to form a, you know, a pair or a group to comment each other's essay and then Last, you can ask them to submit their essays to you. So I think if you can integrate three types of feedback, students will be greatly engaged in, in the whole process. Okay? Okay. Okay, thank um, you. Okay, thank you very much for your question. Thank you, Dr. Victor. No problem. So, um... I think there is no other question. Uh, I think, Muhammad, there are people who are waiting in waiting room and they are... Uh, no, I just admit, I, I admit them all, Muhammad. Yes. So any other questions? I think they wanted to... Okay, okay Muhammad, I think you can share you can, you can share with all the participants my PowerPoint slides. So if they yeah. have questions, they, they can probably email me and then we can just, you know, and see how we can respond to their questions, okay? Okay, a good idea, Dr. Victor. Yeah, okay, I will, okay, I will leave my email on the PowerPoint, PowerPoint slide. So um, you can write to me if you have any question. Um, so as I repeatedly, yeah, PowerPoint, I can share with you, no problem. I can share, okay, I can share my PowerPoint with every one of you, no problem. I think it's very important for teachers to understand that we cannot completely, okay, we cannot completely rely on these programs. So for example, um, the first, okay, the first, the first, okay, the first digital, the first digital tool and the AW program I shared with you, Criterion. It's probably the most, okay, the most commonly used writing evaluation platform around the world. However, research shows that this one is not perfect. Many teachers, instructors complain about its disadvantages, its functions. So we cannot rely on them completely. That's why in my research and in my today's presentation, I emphasize the importance of digital literacy and student engagement. Mm -hmm. So we cannot, okay, give, 
a writing program, a digital tool to our students and let them use it. It's important for teachers to help students develop their digital literacy and how to effectively engage them in writing and revision. For example, in my research, good students, some, I would not call them good students, maybe top students or students who are very motivated. So they are willing to spend more time to revise their essays and they are willing to to go the extra mile and to look for information on the internet and try to polish their writing. So this is very important because this is a, a, you know, an indication of student engagement. They learn how to engage in their writing process by checking information, looking for a better word, and try to diversify their sentence structures. So all these require their engagement. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, who, okay. The, Huaida, very important. Yes. Let's good start. writers. Okay. Good writers are good readers. Okay. They have to read extensively. But it's important for teachers, like all the educators, to help students to develop, to cultivate that awareness. Okay. If you want to improve your writing, you cannot just rely on a several, you know, several writing classes. That will be enough. You need to develop a habit of reading. Okay, I try to read extensively and intensively. And for teachers, as I, as I said to the first participant, you know, it's important for teachers to demonstrate to our students okay what good writing looks like okay we need to walk students through step by step okay for example let's analyze how this writer composed this paragraph so what literary devices what read okay rhetoric de devices the author used and how to combine sentences and how to use a logical connection. It's very important. Okay? Okay. I think Mr. Osman uh, has a question. Okay, there's the last question, Mohammed, uh, because we are going to Go ahead. disconnect um, five minutes. So okay. hello. Sure. Yes. Yes, hello. Hello, how are you? I'm sorry I joined late, but I, I attended the last part only. Regarding crit criterion, I think this program is used by the TOEFL organization for correcting exactly. writing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. ETS. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so they stopped using the um, uh, people in, in correcting writing. Sorry, can you say that again? Because I attended a session about how to correct writing in the TOEFL, in the TOEFL IBT. Yes, yes. Uh, you, you mean that now they are using computer in checking writing? No, no. Of people? In TOEFL, no. In TOEFL, yeah. they have raters. Yeah. They have yeah. human raters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different rater, yeah, yeah, you know. Yes. Okay. So, uh, do, do you recommend that we cannot completely depend on these programs? No, we can never completely depend, okay, depend on these programs. As, yeah. I, as I was responding to one of the participants, it's important for writing teachers or teachers or English teacher in general to integrate yeah. different types of feedback. These programs and probably students can ask their peers to comment, okay, on yeah. their essay. And then they can submit their essay to their teachers for teacher mm -hmm. feedback. So if you can integrate computer generated feedback with peer feedback and teacher feedback, students will be more engaged in the writing process. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Let me, okay. Let me just uh, respond to one of the participants, Zizo Amir, right? So, so, uh, 
this participant asked me, what is intensive reading? Okay, okay. So we often say that reading, okay, extend, okay, extensively and intensively. Okay, so if we read extensively, that we need to read different types of texts, different genres, right? Fictions, poems, academic writing, or, you know, argumentation, narration. Intensive, okay? Intensive reading, which means that we try to look at one piece of writing, okay? One piece of writing and try to analyze line by line, word by word. We try to understand how the writer use specific sentences and words, okay? So read, okay? That means as teachers, we really need to help students to understand why good writers produce and compose in a certain way. It's important for teachers to demonstrate, okay? Especially in class, okay? So let's take a look how good writers go about their writing process. So first of all, look at their composing process. How do they plan? Okay, how do they plan? How do they monitor? How do they set their goals? And then in the production, when we look at their texts, so we can take a look um, from the first sentence to the last sentence. Okay, let's see what we should write in the first sentence. For example, in argumentative writing. So we, prob we probably need to focus on the topic sentence, right? So try to focus on different parts, okay? Different parts of a piece of writing. And then um, students probably can understand what is expected of them when they need to write an academic essay. So that's what we call intensive reading, okay? So try to focus on how, you know, how the writer uh, use different devices, for example, even how the writer is using hedging, okay, hedging devices, okay, that's, okay, intensive reading, okay, I hope I have answered your question, uh, Ziz, right, who is the participant, I think it's, um, so Zizel, right? Yes, okay. uh, excuse me, Mr. Hamad. I just have a very important question for me. I know you have said last question, but please, can I say my question? Yes, okay. One sure, question. sure, last one, yeah. no Dr. problem. Dr. you. Right. Thank you very much for your generosity and your uh, effort. What's the difference in academic writing between uh, an abstract or abstract and the introduction? Sorry, can you say that again? Uh, it doesn't, okay, it doesn't, okay. Okay. Sorry, okay. I cannot hear very clearly, okay? In, a, in academic okay. writing, yeah, in academic writing, on writing yes. an essay or an article, uh, yep. sorry, in writing a research paper, in writing a research paper, what's the difference between an introduction and the abstract? Okay, <laughs> thank you very much, okay. So, okay, so abstract and introduction, intro, okay, introduction are very, very different. So in abstract, so normally we have around 200 words, right? Around 200 words. So in the abstract, you need to, first of all, talk about the status quo, okay? The current situation or use one or two sentences to introduce your topic. And then you need to identify the research gap, okay? The research gap, why you want to conduct your study. And then you need to talk about research methods. For example, you use questionnaire, you use interview, and then you provide the findings of your study. Okay, that basic, okay, that basically the abstract. In an introduction, okay, First of all, you have more space, okay? You need to, okay, I think you need to um, talk about 
the research, okay, the research background in greater detail. And it's also very important for you to use citation in introduction. So normally we don't use citation in abstract. So introduction is more detailed, okay? So it's more concrete. You use citation to talk about the research background and the research topic. And then you can move on to talk about what has been done, okay? And then what is not enough. That's why you talked about your study. And you don't need to talk about the findings, okay? There's no need for you to talk about your findings and suggestions and, you know, recommendations or implications in introduction. But you can talk about the structure, the organization of your as of your uh, article, say, uh, I will talk about this and that, and then my article will conclude with this and that. Okay? Uh, uh, the last question, Dr. Uh, Victor, I'm Thank sorry. You uh, Thank, Thank you very much. No problem. About suggesting a writing skill, the checklist for the secondary stage. This is our last okay, question. Um, Okay, so a reading skill checklist for secondary stage. Um, a writing I think skill, a writing skill, doctor. I, I think they could, uh, you could provide them with uh, your email and they could contact you to. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, I think that's okay. I cannot respond to that question in a few words. So mm -hmm. I guess probably if they are interested, they can email me. Okay. Okay, doctor. Okay. Can you both? Yeah, I think it's about, time? yeah, sure. Okay, I think it's about time, right? It's about one hour. So. Yeah. Yes, I know that. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your precious time, doctor. And we appreciate you being uh, with us today. I uh, want to thank you very much. Um, and uh, our um, great honor to have you as our featured speaker today. No problem, no problem. Um, I'm very happy to share with every one of you here my research and my teaching experience. And as my expertise um, is in outdoor writing, I'll be very happy to share with you, okay, my, um, my research area. So if it's related to writing, I'll be um, very help, okay, I'll be very happy to answer that. But if it's not my research area, I hope I, I will just try to answer your question, but, I'm, but I cannot guarantee that I could okay i could answer your questions okay effectively but i'll try to um okay i'll try to give you some help okay, okay. thank you your thank email, you very your email, doctor, please. okay uh, so they are asking they are asking my email address can i yes. leave them okay can i leave my email address in my powerpoint so you can share the powerpoint with every one of them okay doctor that's a very good okay okay sure Okay, thank you very much for your participation and thank you very much for your response. Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to email me and thank you very much. Okay. Thank you again, Dr. Victor. Uh, we Okay. Uh, for, more, for more information, you can visit our uh, uh, Facebook page and download the, the, presentation. Uh, the, 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 the presentation and the sessions. Thank you for all. Thank you, Dr. Victor. See you, inshallah, next time. I'm okay, I'll see, you like, I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you, Dr. Victor. You are most welcome. Okay, my pleasure. You are most welcome, Doctor. Okay, goodbye all.